Welcome back. We found this angelic projection in the east room of the compound. Let's try and talk to it. So where's the emergency? Greetings, I am James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. What can we do for you? All right, I know you're just a projection. Let's speak with your real masters. As always, let's just be nice. So where's greetings? I am James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. What can we do for you? I am Azra of the Omegan people, an ancient and venerable race which labors to prevent the domination of this world by the forces of darkness. We require you to expunge this place of our mortal enemies. Captain, the most worthwhile purpose in life is to fight against the forces of darkness. We must help him. Enemies? This world is so barren that all the life on it is located right here. If you have mortal enemies, we've not seen them. Who are you talking about? Well, Spock did say that there were two life forms. So, I'm assuming that's the mortal enemies. Our Prime Directive prohibits us from taking part in wars on one side or the other. It would be seen as intervention. We are willing to negotiate a compromise. That seems like the Starfleet way. You will forgive me if I don't fall for a pretty face. I'm not about to expunge anyone. And I will take no action until I've heard both sides of the story. That's kind of rude. Enemy, our Prime Let's Directive this prohibits one. us from taking part in war. You imperil your soul by conversing with the enemy, that sugar-tongued Visner. I cannot protect you, but I do not imagine I can dissuade you either. Go, do what you must. I do not have that much time, but will be here if you seek to comply with my request. Interesting. Well, it's not like Ensign Johns wants us to help him, but uh, I'm with Kirk. We should find out more first. The other life form was to the west, but I want to check out the room to the north first. Just to go in order. Similar, but um, seems more empty. A large dry room. The huge ancient stones remind you of the built. Okay, that's the same description in every room. The computer console appears normal, though non-functional. A large alien computer. There's no um, lightning whatever behind this porthole. A viewing port into the genetic holding tank. Seems like another tank, but perhaps this one's empty. James T. Kirk, as always, appears fit, alert, and ready for the challenges of the universe. Ensign Johns wears his surprise at the surroundings transparently on his face. Spock raises an eyebrow as he surveys the room. Dr. Leonard McCoy smiles as he is confronted with a familiar environment. I think we've had these descriptions. Why do I have a feeling that this mission will be resolved in this room? Divine inspiration, Captain? I won't discount it, Ensign. I will. This place doesn't feel evil, Captain. Well, that's good to know, I guess. Whatever that means. Do you have any idea what this machine does, Spock? It looks like a containment unit for an artificially created genetic construct. My tricorder indicates the device contains a nutrient replicator that could last for thousands of centuries. I would speculate this would nursemaid the genes until it has evolved into a higher form of life and is ready for release on the planet's surface. Interesting. It does, however, seem empty right now. Well, this place seems peaceful enough. The computer is functional but I detect no connection between the keyboard and the machine itself. Apparently, it was designed this way. Okay, it seems the same as the other one. Nothing unusual about that object, Captain. There is power going into these circuits, Captain, making it capable of function. Well, that is good to know. I'm just a simple con- I'm just a- I'm just a- I don't think McCoy can- I'm just a simple- Scan anything here? No, we can't. Can we try to use the computer? The narrow width of the keyboard indicates the creatures who designed it were possessed of hands with only three fingers and a thumb. 
Okay, that's useful to know, but I guess the answer is no, we can't use it. So let's head to the um, west then. See if we can find that other life form. The mortal enemies. I welcome you, otherworlders. I beseech you, save us from that which seeks our destruction. How fitting for a devil to appear on a world that looks like hell. Enough of that, Mr. Johns. This is just another xenobiological entity. Correction, Doctor. This is a projection of a xenobiological entity. Jim, the only life form readings are within that machine, behind the portal. Single cell organisms with an extremely high reproductive rate, but a very poor metabolism and an extremely short lifespan. Interesting. That seems to be the exact opposite of the others we saw. And it seems like they also want our help. Hmm. The monstrous projection towers over you with viscous bodily fluids oozing from sores and coagulating in long, putrid streamers. In its swollen, pus-ridden, piggish eyes, you see fear mixed with cunning. You know, I've never been happier about the low resolution of this game than I am right now. A large alien computer. Seems to be another genetic bank, just like the other ones. The computer console has a conventional keyboard which is covered by odd symbols you do not immediately recognize. The thick glass window and the light coming from it make it difficult to see beyond it, though you get the impression of a living plasma swirling behind it. The wall slot is made of surgical steel, yet it is padded as if ready to receive a fragile vessel or container. A large dry room. All these rooms have the same description, it seems. James T. Kirk scrutinizes the room. His and these are also repeat descriptions, it seems. I can't say that I'll nominate this place for viewing in the Federation's architectural archives. No. That other planet we were on earlier with the, the other primitive race, the, what was it, the Belkosi? The, those rooms were a lot more interesting looking than these, that's for sure. McCoy sort of blends in with the projection, it's the same shade of blue. How come I always come to the barren planets, Jim? You come to all the planets. And I think they're mostly barren because those were easier to construct on sound stages. This machine is a genetic bank, Captain. I suspect that the projection acts as a fail-safe mechanism that will surrender samples of the genetic code for sequencing and replication when the mechanism is willing. It's very similar to the other one. This place feels evil, sir. I hope we don't have to stay here very long. How does a place feel evil? Can you explain that to me, maybe? Nothing unusual about that object, Captain. Can't scan the computer itself here for some reason. The computer is functional, but I detect no connection between the keyboard and the machine itself. Apparently, it was designed this way. Energy levels behind this glass are more than sufficient for having powered the distress signal we received. Since they both want our help, I guess there's no real way of knowing which one actually sent the signal. Maybe they both did. There is power going into these circuits, Captain, making it capable of function. I think we can use McCoy's tricorder as well. Actually, we can use... Uh, we can scan the projection too. This projection is being cycled at 1,000 frames a second, which suggests the equipment was designed to function in the presence of a race that has a sharper visual acuity than the human or Vulcan races. And that's the same as the other one. I'm just a simple... The glass-lined enclosure beyond this portal is teeming with life, literally Billions and billions of creatures reside herein. The genetic pattern seems unusually stunted. It's, it's almost as though something's missing. 
That seemed to be the case with the other creatures as well. Whatever he is, he's not alive. I get no readings at all from him. Well, let's talk to him. Greetings. I am James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. What can we do for you? So, when do the wicked witches and goblins show up? <laughs> Good question. Your emergency beacon and statement lead me to believe you see more of an emergency than exists here. Greetings. I am James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. Let's stay Enterprise. polite. What can we do for you? I am Visner of the Alphen people. Our race possessed this world and thrived here until the invasion by the forces of light. We are locked in a death struggle with them, for they desire our destruction. Do you aid them? No, we do not aid them. Wars and destruction are not things we value, Visner. Our prime directive prevents us from interfering in internal struggles. But at the request of all parties, we might negotiate a compromise. That's very similar to what we told um, Azra. Also, Elfins and Omegans, very original. Forgive me, but I find that claim insupportable. This world, while grim, hardly looks like a battleground. Who is trying to destroy it? It's clear that uh, they're talking about the other single-celled life forms, although I don't really know how they're doing battle. I guess that's why they needed help? Wars and destruction are not things we value, Visner. Let's go with Our this prime one. Directive you open yourself to confusion in speaking with Azra. But it is understandable that you want to hear his side before acting. My assessment of you suggests that most of you will fight the clouding of logic and will see through Azra's deception. Please report to me your success. Why wait? We've already talked to Azra. It surprises me that you managed to survive listening to his warped theology. Yours must be a patient life form. Frankly, Visner, Azra is certainly committed to his cause but hardly the blood-mad fanatic you describe him to be. Well, he did want to destroy the, uh, Alphans, so... Warped theology. It is true they differ greatly from you, but your worldviews are based on common beliefs. You see things from different perspectives, that's all. Frankly, there's no warped theology. Let's go with that one. It is they true do seem they to have some things you, in common. But are you utterly ungrounded in logic? They are creatures of superstition. They invaded our world, then sought to drive us from it. How can you suggest we are anything alike? You question my grounding in logic, but you don't apply logic to an examination of Alphan beliefs. Aren't they concerned with the same things you are? You're supposed to be the reasonable one. Your facts can't be very persuasive if you aren't willing to try and find common ground. You said they usurped your place in the world, which suggests prior ownership by you. What evidence do you have to support that concept? I am curious to see if this is uh, in any way evidence-based or just something they believe. You question. You said so they go with that one. Place in the world. We know we came first because they invaded us. An invasion suggests they came to take away that which we possessed. Clearly, you can see that. How do you know they didn't exist on this world before you encountered them? Do you further suppose they came first and we invaded them? I see there are only single-celled organisms here, each with a defect. Perhaps at one time. The Alpha and Omega life forms were united. A strong, viable species that became divided. Only by reuniting can you hope to survive. And only through mutual cooperation and our help can you reunite. Captain, this thing is evil. We can't unite them. Your position is unassailable and points out the one and only purpose for our races. Thank you, Captain Kirk, for making me see that. Yes, I desire your help for my people. Help us. Well, that was easy. Looks like um, they gave up a sample or something. The dark sample seems more filled with corruption than it does any wholesome living creatures. How is a single celled organism evil in any way? I just don't get it. This colony of creatures appears viable for the short term. Boy, these elephants are healthy little beggars. They're multiplying at a phenomenal rate. So it seems like the um, elephants have fast 
reproductive rates with slow metabolism, and the Omegans are the opposite, so yeah. It is pretty clear that they uh, need to be combined to gain the strengths of both. Why is it set up this way? It seems very deliberate. Almost as if somebody wants us to do this. You take the alpha sample, which feels cold to the touch. Just an alpha sample won't do, though. We're gonna have to go back to Azra and convince them to give up a sample as well. Hopefully it will just be just as easy. Seems like Azra is not here, but we can bring him back. Or Spock can, anyway. I will now reactivate Azra, Captain. Let's see if we convince him to give us a sample as well. Was it not as I said it would be? Are not the Alphans unfeeling, uncaring beings unworthy of life? Did they tell you their lies? Foul lies? Their position contradicts yours, but there are similarities. You dwell on your differences so much, you just can't see them. Frankly, Azra Visner is quite rational and makes your impassioned pleas for genocide sound psychotic. That doesn't sound like the right way of convincing anybody. For a being of goodness, you're rather bloodthirsty. Maybe you should try practicing what you preach. Foul lies? Their position contradicts yours. I think this is the most reasonable way to go. Captain, they're as different as angels and demons. Similarities? They are beings of shadow. They mock our perfection. They are our antithesis, created after we were to destroy us and our potential for good. You repeatedly proclaim yourself good and suggest you are morally superior to the Alphans. Why don't you act like it? That is a good question, but I'm more interested in the fact that they also seem to claim they came first, when in fact it seems more likely that they um, came at the same time, I guess. If you're so perfect, how come you need our help? You said they were created after you were. How do you know that? Well, that worked on the elephants, so maybe it'll work on the Omegans as well. You repeat. You said they were yes, created. Yes, let's go with that one. You. We know we came first because that is what our sacred scriptures tell us. In the light we were born, and commanded to shun that which dwells in darkness. This clearly tells us that we came first. Surely you can see that, or is it that you have some other interpretation of the event? that birthed the Omegans. Does your sacred scriptures explicitly say that no beings were created before you? Dare you suggest they came first? Let's see what we've got. Two single-celled organisms, each incapable of survival on their own. One lives in light, the other lives in darkness. Each must live a limited and unstable life without the other. Captain, do you know what you're doing? Allow us to unite you again. Your combined strengths will make you a viable entity again. The persuasiveness of your arguments has opened for me a door through which I spy a future and a truth that I have long denied. You are correct. Perhaps being only half of a whole, I could not see the solution. Yes, I desire your help for my people. Help us. Wow, if only all religious disputes were this easily settled. The glowing light coming from the sample dish tells you that the colony is thriving. This casing is constructed from a new... Oh. That's the computer, not the sample. This colony of creatures appears viable for the short term. These Omegans are incredible. They metabolize almost everything, which explains how they give off that glow. But yet their reproductive rate is very low. The sample dish feels warm to the touch. And the other one felt calls. Alright, looks like we have all the uh, equipment we need here to combine these two samples. 
All we need to do is insert them. This sample sequence is like a dream. Good. Let's do the elephants. I don't know why, but I could not get a good sampling. That seems weird. Mr. Johns, are you certain that you can't get that sample sequenced? I'll try it again, Captain. Another failure. I'll try again, if that's what you want. This seems very suspicious. How unusual. Maybe I should have a go at this problem. I don't think you'll be able to help, Doctor. Look, Ensign. You've already crossed the line between incompetence and insubordination. I'm trying to help save your career. I appreciate your effort, but you can't help me. It seems that Engine Johns is a bit stuck on his uh, good and evil view of things here and does not want to sample the uh, elephants because he wants to prevent us from combining the two. It's kind of unprofessional. Let's see if we can convince him otherwise. Ensign, let Dr. McCoy try that troublesome sequence. I can do the job, sir, if I can have some peace and quiet here. Mr. Johns, I think I'm getting a clear picture here of your difficulties. Do you realize that insubordination is an offense punishable by a court-martial? It looks to me that you're deliberately trying to mislead us. That's not a good career move. No, it's not. Calm down, Ensign. No one is criticizing you. I just need answers. However, let's try to be diplomatic about it. I appreciate the offer, Captain, but I know what's right and wrong here, so I don't need your help. Ensign, I appreciate your situation, but this is not the time for philosophy. You have a job to do. Indeed. Ensign, you are here as a genetic engineer, not as a philosopher. I expect my orders to be obeyed, and if you have a problem with them, I don't expect to be deliberately misled. I could really use a Tellarite security officer right now. <laughs> That's random. Ensign, I appreciate Just your go situation, with this one. but this is not the time. You don't understand, Captain. Look at the Alphans and look at the Omegans. There's so much evil in the universe. You're asking me to destroy a race of good and beauty by mixing their genetics with something ugly, something evil. I can't do it. Ensign, these Alphans and Omegans are single-celled creatures. Those projections are only constructs. Examine them yourself. Could their DNA produce creatures like Azra and Visner? I am asking you to do nothing of the kind, Edson. You believe in the struggle of good against evil, and I respect that. But the application of your philosophical perspective is misplaced here. The Alphans and Omegans are single-celled creatures. They are no more capable of good or evil than a triple. Can't you see that? Edson, I think you're confusing things. The Alphans and Omegans are single-celled creatures. While the projections may have seemed sophisticated and human, they are constructs. You can look at the sequence and tell what you have there for DNA could never produce such a creature, can't you? These kind of all seem the same to me. I'm just going to pick this one. Single cells. You're right. I've been a real idiot. I suppose I should take a refresher course in ASOP. It wouldn't hurt. Some of the wisest people in history have written for children. Never judge an input card by its label. I guess that was the trap I fell into and kept me from doing my job and made me deceive my captain. If it's any consolation, you're not very good at deception, Ensign. Thank you, sir. I hope you'll give me a chance to correct my mistakes. Do you think we're really meant to combine the two races? You've programmed the sequences. You can tell whether they're compatible. Sir, the sequencer indicates that they need to be combined for their continual survival. But how did you know? I listened to Dr. McCoy. It seemed the logical conclusion, given the evidence. Thank you, Captain. Indeed, it did. All right, let's try that again. The alpha sample is sequenced, sir. Good. Now that we have them sequenced, we can combine them. The two samples have joined together as easily as if they had once been a whole and had been separated before. Any yep. race that had this technology 50,000 years ago could possibly have been able to perform such a dissection and kept both halves alive. Captain, 
With the samples sequenced together, I'm ready to use the replicator to produce a sample with the combined genetic data. The question, however, remains, why were they separated and left here only for us to find and recombine? I guess maybe we'll find out once we do so. I am producing a new culture, Captain. Captain, the genetic sequence is still stored in the computer. If we need another sample, the replicator can generate it. That's good to know. A weak greenish glow comes from this dish. This colony of creatures appears viable for the long term. Quite vital and thriving. That is the opposite of the individual ones, which were only viable for the short term. These combined creatures have a triangular structure. These gamins have the energy efficiency of the omegans and the reproductive rate of the alphans. That's good. That's what we were going for. And now McCoy is kind of in the way. But you can still I get it. I officially christen this life form the Gammons. Even though McCoy already called them that. So, kind of late with that one. Makes sense though, considering we had the beginning and the end of the Greek alphabet. Now we have the middle. Well, since we have this empty bank here, I'm guessing that this is where the sample is supposed to go. Well, Jim, it doesn't look like it does anything. Oh, I guess I spoke too soon. It took it in. It looks as if the colony is getting a foothold in there. Life energy levels are spiking. They're building to a level sufficient for sending out a signal 100 times stronger than the one that brought us here, Captain. The gammon sample appears to be thriving in this environment. Thank you for your hard work. You have fulfilled the design for which we were created. I am authorized to tell you the true nature of this planet and those who brought you here. All you need do is ask. Interesting. It is at this point, if you had not meddled with the uh, antennas outside, that you would get only a partial message, an indication that something is wrong with the transmission, and then you can go outside and fix the antennas and it will be correct. Which is kind of what I wanted to do for the Let's Play, because it makes more sense that way. You know why you're adjusting the antennas. But like I said, I could not get full score on this mission doing it in that order. So that's kind of annoying. We now have uh, a green lightning pattern here. A viewing port into the genetic holding tank. Beautiful and quite lifelike, the three-dimensional projection appears to be a blend of alpha and omega traits. I guess that was the point. Energy levels behind this glass are more than sufficient for having power the distress signal we received. In addition, I detect a nutrient replicator within the apparatus, capable of feeding organisms for thousands of centuries. This projection is being cycled at 1,000 frames a second, which suggests the equipment was designed to function in the presence of a race that has a sharper visual acuity than the human or Vulcan races. Same descriptions as the original projections. There's nothing living in here, but there are nutrients capable of sustaining large quantities of life. That description, however, makes more sense for when the thing was empty. So, I wonder if that's another glitch. Whatever he is, he's not alive. I get no readings at all from him. Let's talk to him. Thank you, Captain, for your aid in constituting my people and in the unexpected necessary realignment of our communications array. You 
have performed admirably. Of the 16 stations reporting at this point, there have been 50% fatalities, 30% other failures, and only 20% successes. One group got points for style. Points for style? Is this some sort of game? Was it us? I hope we got points for style. Not another alien race with a superiority complex. Who are you this time? That doesn't seem like a good way to initiate first contact. Your appreciation is welcome, but many questions remain unanswered. Who are you? Points for your appreciation is welcome, but many questions remain unanswered. Who are you? Well, he did say he would answer our questions, so let's ask away. I am Sisissa, a projection of a synthesis of Azra and Visner. Clearly you know that the primitive life forms you have been dealing with are incapable of creating that in which you now stand. You will also note that the more demonic of the creatures displayed a passivity you did not expect, while the morally pure creature was aggressive and bloodthirsty. The contradictions were noted and duly dealt with. I take it you were testing us on our ability to deal with disparate and contradictory inputs. Yes, your reasoning ability was being tested, as well as your ability to adapt to new ideas when they conflict with deeply held beliefs and cultural customs. You passed quite admirably. The Brassica are impressed. I'm not clear on who the Brassica are. Captain, from this site, I can deduce various things about the Brassica. They are taller and more slender than we are. They are possessed of three fingers and a thumb on each hand. I suppose bilateral symmetry, and I know they possess greater visual acuity than humans. They visited this place well before humans had left the Cro-Magnon stage of development. And I note they have avoided detection by us, and presumably every other race in the universe, before they decided to send out signals to bring us to their bases. Thank you, Mr. Spock. And more you shall know as you continue on the quest. I wish you luck. Kirk to Enterprise, Scotty, four to beam up. Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. In this case, Bones, a new beginning. We were the midwives for the rebirth of a life form. Two halves that have been made whole again. That's the way it was meant to be. And let us hope that this is the end of Ensign John's prejudices. We can all learn to stop judging people by appearances. Ensign John's might have done well to remember the biblical representation of Lucifer appearing in the guise of an angel of light. You can never trust anybody. And people who look like pointy-eared hobgoblins are definitely at the bottom of the list. It appears that Dr. McCoy did not learn the lesson of this mission either. Unfortunate, but not unexpected. Fortunately, the Alphans and the Omegans, learned philosophy and personal belief, are not as easily divorced from logic as some would believe. We humans attain our greatest fulfillment when both of them are united. Really, Captain? Really? But I've had enough philosophy for one day. I'd rather worry about these Brassica and their cosmic quest. Well, with me aboard, we're sure to get points for style. Many questions remain unanswered, Captain. And there's only one way to answer them. Captain, message from Starfleet. Bring it up, Lieutenant. I have reviewed your report from your recent assignment, Captain, and have a few comments. I am very pleased with your performance. It was a perfect mission, Jim. Your reputation as Starfleet's best starship captain is secure. Kane out. Ahead, Mr. Sulu. Warp Factor 5. Leaving orbit, increasing to warp factor 5. Another perfect mission. Going well so far? Voids? Spock, where do you think we should start looking for this? Brassica? Logic suggests that they will present us with opportunities to come to them. Captain, a message from Starfleet. On screen. Captain. The USS Regulus has been forced to cancel its survey mission to the Antares Rift. We've decided to redirect the Enterprise to that mission. The USS Hood will take over for your current assignment. Of course, the Antares Rift has a rather dangerous reputation. Nothing the Enterprise can't handle. But be careful. Starfleet out. Okay, weren't we supposed to have shore leave at some point? Guess we need to go to this Antares Rift first. I guess the Brassica are the ones who are testing us, both in the uh, second mission of the game and this one. Or the last one, anyway. I wonder if we will see more of them. 
And before you wonder, no, they have never been seen in any of the shows. They exist in this game only. But first we'll have to deal with uh, this next assignment, which we'll do in the next video.